all right so what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel man it's your boy and seeing as though we have this 10,000 crystal spending event going on right now a lot of you guys have been hitting me up asking me to share my thoughts on the seven crystal characters that we currently have in the game because now is probably one of the best times to pick up a couple of the deluxe packages so you can snag yourself this free six star mega rank up ticket now keep in mind even though we have the crystal spending event going on right now and now is definitely one of the best times to pick up a couple of deluxe packages it may actually not be the best time to acquire a couple of these characters right here. I'm talking about Emma Frost, Sabretooth, Iceman, and if you didn't already have them, Adam Warlock would actually be here. And the reason why I said it might not be the best time to purchase these guys is simply because last year for Black Friday, Netmarble actually put Emma Frost and Adam Warlock on sale at a reduced crystal cost. So they may actually do the exact same thing this year on Black Friday, and they'll probably do it across the board, meaning for Adam Warlock, Lock, Emma Frost, Sabretooth, and Iceman. Simply because Sabretooth and Iceman were not here last year. So if they were going to do a discount again, they would actually make it a discount across the board. So it may actually not be the best time to spend your crystals on these characters, but it's definitely one of the best times to pick up a couple of the deluxe packages if you don't have them. So that being said, boys, let's jump right into it, man. I'm going to be ranking all seven of these characters for you guys. And we're going to be doing it based on just how useful these characters are in world boss ultimate abx shadowland and timeline battle to a small degree now we're not going to be looking directly into the overall value of the deluxe packages because it goes without saying all three of the deluxe packages are worth it now more than ever even magneto even though this guy has fallen off from a one point being honestly the best super villain in the game to now being damn near nothing so anyways let's jump right into it man so when it comes to these three characters the three deluxe characters it goes without saying that my baby betsy towers towers above the rest they are honestly I, that's not that's not true she, i was gonna say they're nothing before her but honestly sue is a very close second but in terms of dps and just how useful psylocke is as a character she's an absolute monster the other two characters are gonna be decent for world boss but she's gonna be an absolute monster pushing state 70 plus against ebony moss something that you can't do with the other two characters none of them are gonna be pushing in the 60s in the 70s like that psylocke in this uniform is an absolute monster for all pve content she can clear all all the way up to like stage 100 in Shadowlands. She can do ABX and she can do PvP too, simply because she has multiple different iframes. She has four different iframes. She has damage immunity, right? And in addition to that, this skill actually reflects damage that she receives. And she has two skills that can basically just one shot people in PvP. In addition to that, this uniform makes it so that she actually has a good amount of HP. So Psylocke overall is an absolute beast of a character. However, Invisible Woman is no slouch either. She's a beast of a character with plenty of meta qualities in her kit starting with her two skill giving her five seconds of charm with a seven second cooldown meaning with max skill cooldown this goes down to 3.5 seconds meaning every single one of your fights will be extremely easy if the enemy does not have debuff removal or debuff reduction because they're going to be charmed basically indefinitely so she's an amazing character she's basically enchantress 2.0 if you guys were playing the game when enchantress first came in you guys know exactly what i'm talking about she's made world boss very very easy and sue just added on to that because she's not just relying on her charm she actually has very good damage and very good survivability as well this charm heals her on her third skill right here she has hidden defense down right which actually applies in world boss ultimate plus she has invincibility plus all attack all defense all that good stuff right on her four star passive she actually has basically the same passive as spider-man 2099 that Layla ai that turns him invisible she has that and she can actually apply that to her teammates right so this is actually absolutely amazing in addition to that her four skill right offers a damage proc it's only 50 percent but it's also offering five seconds of immunity and that's actually insane to think that both her third and her fourth skill are offering her the two best ways to protect yourself in marvel future flights outside of an iframe right and then speaking of iframe she has a very good iframe on her fifth skill with the ability to penetrate super armor barrier shield and all damage immunity basically the only thing she doesn't have 
is iframe ignore and the ability to penetrate invincibility that's actually crazy i can't wait to see her get a uniform because she's gonna skyrocket because right now she can do pve at a very high level not as high as psylocke psylocke's base damage is just absolutely insane right but she can do it at a very high level and she also has some pvp application as well the only bad thing about her is basically her leadership but it kind of makes sense right mind resist moving on we have magneto i'm actually putting magneto in the third spot here behind sue and betsy even though this guy has his tier three and it really pains me to do this because i love mags he's my guy but basically all he has going for him is his leadership his tier three skill which the animation is absolutely amazing and it does good damage and his tier two passive those three things are really good about magneto his fifth skill is really good as well because it's a refreshing buff so even if someone removes this like buff from you it will immediately refresh after one second so that's really really good but magneto's base damage is so low and even with four different iframes he's not really offering too much the only people who care about a tier 3 magneto in the state of the game right now are people who are in a top 20 alliance that's it so magneto comes in in the third spot and if it wasn't for gene gray being the best character in the game right now his value would be even less than it currently is so that's actually quite sad that the legendary magneto has to rely on gene gray being the best character in the game to justify his worth right so moving on we have the second tier of characters right here. Honestly, if you don't have all three of these, you shouldn't be looking at these characters right here. That's just my personal opinion. The deluxe packages are gonna offer you so much value from the bios and all the materials that you get from farming the missions every day. But moving on, we have Emma Frost, Sabretooth, and Iceman. And from this list, I honestly think Emma Frost with their uniform is number one. She should be the first one you pick up if you plan to get her uniform because it may Makes her slightly better makes her much smoother to play in addition to that it makes it so that you have this amazing summon that can actually reflect damage back at the enemy in pvp and sometimes even one shot them right so that's actually really crazy and she's much smoother and fluid to play in the uniform her damage also goes up as well however i still find emma frost to be a very annoying character to play and that's something i voice every single time i use the character because it's very easy for enemies to cancel her skills because the mind control which is one of the best things in her kit it's not shown here but best believe there is four seconds of mind control here right it is delayed and oftentimes it's too late when it activates and the enemy just moves away and cancels out your forward skill and you lose a bunch of damage but overall she's a good character she's very very tanky thanks to this three skill of hers and she has a couple good iframes honestly i want to see another uniform for emma frost because i don't think she is where she needs to be in this game she should definitely be rivaling psylocke and jean gray in terms of power and she's not there even with this uniform next up honestly i'm gonna put Sabretooth in the second spot between these three okay i'm gonna put him there simply because he feels like a much more complete character when compared to Iceman. he has the heals he has the iframes he has the damage immunity and he has really good damage the only thing i don't like about victor and that's not even a bad thing about the character is simply the fact that you have to rely on taking damage to activate his four star passive right his four star passive that applies the defense down that stacks up to 55 percent for 10 seconds is really really good however if you're playing really high stages in world boss ultimate or even in shadowland sometimes even getting hit once can one shot victor because his defenses are not that high so having to rely on taking damage to get this buff to his damage it kind of sucks sometimes and that overall is why i don't put him at number one above emma frost right and some of you guys are going to give me shit for not putting iceman at number one but honestly even though iceman has better damage than victor and probably better damage than emma frost as well i find him very difficult to play simply because you have to cancel so many skills to get optimal dps with him and in addition to that when you're canceling all those skills even though he has the damage immunity the iframes and the invincibility you're sacrificing all that to get optimal dps with him and when you get hit with stuff like the poison or bleed he melts really really fast because he has no way to heal himself so it's really sad that they didn't give him at least one heal in his kit because he really feels incomplete and i'm left waiting for a uniform for our beloved bobby drake so that's just my two cents boys and then last and definitely least we have adam warlock a character that you should ideally not be building 
definitely i just made a video about this a few days ago but you definitely should not be building this guy anytime soon you should not be buying him unless he's on sale at a reduced cost because he's really not that good he doesn't offer you much utility in the state of the game right now i know some of you guys are going to give me shit saying he's going to get a uniform eventually but why on earth would i tell people to build up a character that costs millions of gold tons of crystals and tell them use him in shadowland until he gets a uniform why would I not tell them avoid him until he gets a uniform and we see how good that uniform makes him and then build him after that. So yeah, honestly, you should not be touching Adam Warlock in the current state of the game and you definitely should not be buying him at full price. All he offers you is a very fun kit to play with, iframes, damage immunity, but he really, truly needs damage. Even with the revive, I can't justify Adam Warlock as a PvP character or as a PvE character in the current state of the game. So that's just my two cents. I personally put Psylocke at number one, Sue at number two, simply because she's such an amazing character and the charm when she pops in, right, in War Boss, it makes such a big difference when she uses her two or her three and she uses them rather frequently. So I absolutely have to put her here. Honestly, I wanted to put her in number one because she's such a good striker, but Betsy, man, Betsy's an absolute animal, absolute animal. And I think she has enough DPS to push all the way up to stage 80 against Ebony Moss. So that's why she's edging out Sue for me. So I'll definitely say Betsy for number one, Sue for number two. And then we're gonna go Emma Frost number three, simply because she has more PVP value than Saber two, just a little bit more. Then we'll put Saber two at number four. Then we'll put Bobby at number five, Magneto at number six, and then this guy at number seven. That's how we stacking it. That's how we dishing it. You guys can let me know how you personally feel about it. But I think this list is actually very accurate when we're talking about power level and just how amazing and useful these characters currently are in the game. Keep in mind, we're not really talking about the deluxe packages overall. If y'all want me to touch on that, we can definitely do another video on that in the future. Okay, so yeah, man, we're going to wrap it up right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave me your thoughts in the comments and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.